Hi, I'm Mark Wilson, the Engineering Heretic. And today we're going to look at a find I got on uh, eBay Marketplace, uh, not so eBay, Facebook Marketplace. And uh, what it is, it looks like a rather austere looking uh, grandfather clock with a one second cycle, cycling pendulum, which is uh, uh, it's from there and back is two seconds, but uh, it just looks like a rather austere looking grandfather clock and the face of course is also rather austere looking and uh, uh, it's working at the moment and you'll see here the second thing goes across there the minute hand goes and latches over 30 seconds every every 30 seconds it will march it'll it'll move for a 30 second increment so obviously it's not running like a normal grandfather clock so let's have a look inside Inside this clock, it's a rather different sort of situation. I'll just give it a swing because it's a, still, still um, uh, a few things wrong with it. Uh, um, I got this clock for a song because basically it was missing this particular. Oh, to turn it around the right way. This particular pendulum rod was missing from the clock, and it just had the uh, the, uh, the the box as it stands and basically a mechanism up the top, but. Uh, the pendulum was missing and oddly enough I already had a pendulum for an, from another electric clock and uh, and I've uh, adapted this to suit this particular clock. The original rod, this one's wood, the original rod was, a, was an Invar rod which is a metal that doesn't have any expansion of, of uh, uh, coefficient of expansion under heat. So the clock was effectively regulated and uh, as the uh, temperature increased, it would alter the the uh, the, um, the pendulum length, which would change the accuracy of the clock. Now, this clock comes from, I believe, it's probably from uh, uh, um, the phone companies back in the day. This is from the 1950s, and uh, before quartz crystals and all those sorts of things, and very accurate clocks. These were the most accurate clocks you could get. And of course, these run on 48, uh, about 50 volts. And uh, of course, uh, that's what the, the phone exchanges ran on. So this one is on, on that particular power. Out, power. Um, obviously, there's a transformer and a, and a rectifier. It's running on about 48 volts at the moment. And uh, look at the mechanism. It's a strange looking mechanism. Of course, there is no, uh, you can see here that basically, I'm gonna point this out, a little deep groove coming up now. When that, it's there, it latches down this particular arm here, drops down, makes contact down here. And of course, there's an electromagnet up the top here that basically, pushes this back up again but as that drops down there's a little pin thing here that impulses the pendulum so every 30 seconds it's coming up now you'll see it happen there it goes and it will impulse drops down and impulses the pendulum again and that's how this clock works I achieved about uh, 10 second plus or minus 10 seconds accuracy a day, maybe even longer than that. But uh, um, that was as accurate as a clock could have been back then. And uh, of course, uh, uh, of course, oscillators have changed all that. But uh, this is a, uh, a clock from that particular era, about 1955. Of course, you can see it working again. Uh, and of course, every 30 seconds, this makes contact down here and sends off a pulse to all the clocks in the building or in the exchange and you can see up here there's a uh, what they call a slave clock and there would be a number of these around the building and of course they would receive a pulse every 30 seconds and advance uh, the 30 seconds so all the clocks in the building all register the same time so you can see this thing here just hit another 30 seconds, a little ratchet there. There's a little electromagnet that makes that work down here. And that's the way clocks were, were made. 
and uh, that's how standard time was kept in buildings and organisations back in the 50s and into the 60s and even earlier than that. Uh, this one here is a Gents made in the UK. It's written around the front here. Made in the UK. Um, IBM made them. Um, I think they called the IBM as a synchronarm. I forget what this one's called. Uh, Pulsen, Pulsen Tech, I think it is. Yeah, it's a call to Pulsen Tech um, clock. Uh, that's this one here. And uh, that's the way standard time was kept in buildings before the invention of uh, quartz crystals. And of course, now everybody has the exact time on their phones and there's no real question anymore. But uh, that's how it was done back in the day. And I'm Mark Wilson, and thanks for watching.